Welcome to the My Crazy Office podcast with the authors of Working With You Is Killing Me, Working For You, Isn't Working For Me, and Mean Girls At Work, Kathy Elster and Catherine Crowley. They're committed to creating world peace, one crazy office at a time. And now, here are Kathy and Catherine. Hey everyone, I'm Kathy Elster. And I'm Katherine Crowley, and welcome to My Crazy Office. So excuse me if you hear a nasal tone. Kathy out of has a cold. <laughs> oh. It's okay. It is that time of year, really. <laughs> we could all talk like that throughout the podcast. Oh, no. That'll make you feel better. We'll probably lose some listeners, though, if we do. But actually, I think it's an important topic because there are so many people, myself included, that will come to work infested with colds and get everyone else sick <laughs> and we think that you can't you shouldn't take time off and yet you're really helping a lot of other people take time off mm -hmm. in the long run all right now i'm feeling guilty <laughs> <laughs> no you've been very yeah, you've been very good you're always good about going home early if you don't feel well uh -huh. and like resting like you never push yourself if you're not feeling well yeah that's true i, I mean i don't because you don't want to see me <laughs> Really, in my worst state, <laughs> it's not very pretty. Oh, um, it's beautiful, really. But I don't, you were sick a couple of weeks ago, Catherine. I was. And then, yeah, Logan, you I also, stayed home. you were really sick, right? Mm -hmm. You both stayed home, yeah. So on we go, and yes. it is, tis the season. It is cold and flu season, so. Yeah. Get your so shots. I, ho I hope nobody listening shots. catches my cold. <laughs> <laughs> Just won't go away. All right. So, Logan, our producer, what's hi. Uh, hi? What's our first question? Earlier this year, I landed a job in the marketing division of a major corporation, and I really like it here. Recently, I've gotten the sense that my boss is kind of attracted to me. Mm -hmm. I catch him staring at me during department meetings, and when I speak to him, he starts smiling in that I have a crush on you way. Ooh. The whole thing makes me really uncomfortable. I'm afraid he's going to ask me out. I am definitely not interested in him. What do I do? You create oh a fictitious boyfriend. Ah. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what you have to do. Yeah. I and mean, I'm assuming this is a woman and it's a man. Yeah, I think you, you know, you have to say I'm really flattered. Um, you know, if he asks you out, I'm just I'm right. really well, flattered. It, it could be a while before he does that and she still has to live with the uncomfortable. Yeah, just be flattered, you know, and just you don't you don't wanna uh turn away from it. I mean it is flattering. <laughs> <laughs> See Catherine, you wouldn't enjoy it. I, I would actually get off I on would, it. <laughs> I would hate like, it. I would be embarrassed. Oh, come on. Well, really? here's it. So I'm going to speak to this question person as if <laughs> At least this we're might get two be different nerve wracking. We get two very because... different. Yes. So Kathy's saying enjoy the admiration. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and you I am milk saying it. you could get a lot. No, you could. You yeah. get a promotion. Right. You could get. You get a raise. You can get a lot. All right. So what I'm going to say is if you are fairly new to the workforce and new to this job, this situation can be extremely nerve wracking because don't you don't want to send, I, if you're in, if I were in this position, I wouldn't want to send the wrong message, especially if I totally am not interested in this guy. <laughs> and uh, you still want to impress your boss, right? Those are the two things going on. Well, I mean, you're, you're acting as if, you know, we're not humans in the workplace. Like, you know, it's work. We can't, you know, this can't go on. No. It goes on. It goes on every It goes day. on all the time. And it can be really uncomfortable if you're under, if you're in it and you feel many women feel like somehow they've done something to cause it mm -hmm. or they've led the, the boss on in some way. So what I'm saying is we actually have this, Kathy, in our book, Working For You Isn't Working For Me. <laughs> did we have the same argument then? Yes, we did. <laughs> And because and we defined it that you, since your you know your boss profile is that you're used to being the star that's the people who are like star like employees who like to be in the forefront and be you know shine they may not feel as uncomfortable with this kind of attention but if you're more laid back if you're an observer type person or if you're a caregiving employee which is my tendency you know where you think you're supposed to be so good and so help so much this can be very scary all right so what do you do then well in working for you isn't working for me <laughs> remind me Book yeah. Plug. yeah we say <laughs> what do we say we actually say you can't control your boss's feeling of affection for you and you will probably eventually have to set a limit which is what we're having the boyfriend can come in handily yeah. 
We also say that you don't, that don't feel too guilty about it. If this makes you very uncomfortable, you didn't cause it. And you're probably not the first person that this person, that this boss has had a crush on. Okay. So to depersonalize. All right. Well, so, so we're not that far mm -hmm. off. I think, you, you know, mm -hmm. if, if you somebody likes you that you don't want them to like you, you have right. to create a fake boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> you just Sometimes must. Sometimes it doesn't work though. That's Sometimes right. that'll make him try That's even right. harder because it's like competition now. She's not married. Right. That's he a might just point. a boyfriend, so she's not, you know. So she may have to elope over a week. Right. <laughs> it, well, there's a lot of complications with lying. Yes. Because, yeah. you know, yeah. Um, because somebody might spill the beans and say, who's that? Yeah, I don't know who that person is. Yeah. So, yeah, there's complications. But, I mean, I think, you know, you can go to him and say, you know, it. I'm really flattered that, you know, you, you like me, but I'm a little uncomfortable. Oh, oh God, look at Catherine's <laughs> face. So clearly. I don't, I don't think she should say anything until, uh, unless exactly. she like out outwardly <laughs> says, I like thing. you, or let's go to lunch. Yeah, I would you know, say you have to act professional mm -hmm. and like nothing is happening. Do if you, he asks you out, it. that... Well, wait a minute, do you start dressing like a nun? <laughs> <laughs> Not just a nun, Kathy. Like a man, you start wearing man suits, <laughs> blazers, and bow ties. And okay, okay, that could work. Thick, maybe to yeah. have him think that you're a lesbian or something like that. <laughs> that you don't play for his team. That's right. And, well, some uh, people get turned on by that. But yes, you have to. <laughs> oh my God! There's like no way out here with you. No, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying to be aware that it's a tricky territory. I think, and I do think there are bosses who have crushes. Quite regularly. All right. Well, I'm going to give the the opposite. I think it's an opportunity. I don't think it's <laughs> that terrible a situation. I mean, you could have mm -hmm. the complete opposite, which is your boss is, you know, horrendous to you. Yeah. So mm -hmm. to have a boss that likes you and is attracted to you, I mean, honestly, give me a break. No, it's <laughs> lovely. Breath of fresh air. But <laughs> here's the fear. The fear is that if you say no, let's say he does finally ask you out. Mm -hmm. If you say no, and this has happened. I have clients. I know. I've been there. Is, you say no, he gets mad, and then he isn't such a no, nice No, no, no. It's the way you say no. Mm -hmm. No, and what you have to say is, I'm really flattered, and yeah. thank you, and I yeah. wish we were not in a professional situation, but yeah. that's my standard. I have rules about that. Beautiful. I don't date anyone where I work. I mean, it's the way you handle it, mm -hmm. but I think it's an opportunity. You're going to do well. I mean, maybe this is an old image of a woman getting what she wants <laughs> <laughs> from a man. Wow. It works. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Like, not what Cheryl right. Sandberg yeah, had definitely in Definitely not 21st century, you know, <laughs> feminism here in the, in the workplace. But to Kathy's point, what I will say is absolutely true is that what is tricky and can be surprising. Again, I'm really speaking to the younger employee and having been in this position and being I surprised by it. I worked actually at a gay health center and the director, who was a woman, had a huge crush on me and it was extremely uncomfortable in many ways. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, you know, I did have to say to her, actually, I got to say what you said, Logan, mm -hmm. which is I don't play with that team, but I did have to say it in the nicest possible way. Right. Mm -hmm. And it still was, she didn't want to hear it, and therefore it was a point of tension. Right. It eventually right. faded because exactly. most of this kind of boss will find another person to have a crush on. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, you yeah. know, it's only going to last for a period of time anyway. If it yeah. doesn't get acted upon, they're going to go find somebody else. And yeah. that's what you have to know. Yes. I mean, I had a lot of this in my very early career. Yeah. And I never acted on any of it. But I, yeah. you know. You I enjoyed it. it. Well, it worked. She milked it. it I milked it. And it, <laughs> it always worked in my favor. I have to say it never worked against me. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I would have to call all the women in my life and say, how do I handle this? You know, I wasn't yeah. trying to handle it, but, uh, but I knew not to act on any of it. That's the most important thing. Don't yeah. act on it. Mm -hmm. but I mean, don't get involved with Don't get involved. Yeah. If you're yeah. not interested, don't get involved. If you are interested, that's another story. That's a whole other <laughs> That'll podcast. be another podcast. <laughs> That'll be another. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, you don't want to just date anybody you're working with. You have to be very careful. Yes. So I think that it's an opportunity that can, if handled well, yeah. can serve you. All right. So let's say what we're saying together. Like is like. Right? Like is good. Like is good. If you're uncomfortable with it, we understand. You didn't cause it. And by the way, he'll probably go on to someone else. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. so, and or if, she. And he or she. And if that person then makes an advance or asks you for a date, you have to say, thank you. I'm very flattered. But I just don't mix business with pleasure. Right. 
Okay. Yeah. And when I say uh, milk it, don't, you know, don't send cards. Don't milk it in that respect. <laughs> don't wear <laughs> low cleavage or... Right, right. You don't want to milk it and make it, you know, even more don't enticing. Tease. Right. Teasing. That's a good word. You, you want to milk it in that, you know, you know this person likes you and will probably... Is fond of you. Right. Mm. And, and will probably write you a good reference or will get you promoted, will help you succeed in your career yes mm -hmm. and you you know likability is a very good factor because honestly <laughs> looks go <laughs> not that i know anything about that but <laughs> milk it while you got it honey well, that's the end it. of the game exactly. all right we're gonna i'll just take a quick uh, commercial break and we'll be right back ever feel like you or your company could use a 20-minute therapy session well k squared has your back Simply download a K-Talk, plug in those earpods, or gather a group of your coworkers and feel better instantly. Well, almost. Each K-Talk covers a specific topic and costs a fraction of what a traditional therapy session would. Feeling stressed by your workload? There's a K-Talk for that. Working with someone who's done you wrong? There's a K-Talk for that. Can't ask for a raise, need a vacation, hate your boss? K-Talk, K-Talk, K-Talk. Just go to ksquaredenterprises.com and purchase the K-Talk that fits your situation. Now back to our show. All right, Logan, our producer, what do we have now? We have mm -hmm. another question. Another question. I have a really tough situation at work. I did what they always tell you not to do. I got romantically involved with one of my coworkers. Oh, oh no. boy, I wonder if this is the boss on the first question. Uh, <laughs> we had a great connection for a couple of months. And then he suddenly broke up with me. Oh. Now I have to see him every day and sit near him at meetings. On top of that, I'm gay and I worry about him telling one of our coworkers about our brief relationship. Oh, okay. This is Any advice? Yeah, this, this is, is multiple. Yeah, no, yeah. multiple. So first <laughs> I really want to say. break down this question. I know. Yeah. Well, I just have to, the last part. If you're afraid that this person is going to reveal something about you, then they probably are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I think that whenever you have that fear, it's usually pretty accurate. Well, except that we don't know the other man involved, and we don't know how out he is. So, so why don't he's... so why don't we just take the risk? No, yeah. if you if that's a fear, then you have to really be careful. What are you saying? Mm -hmm. I'm saying that if if that's a fear, then you want to address it. Yes, you want to address it with this person. Speak to them. Yes. Okay. That so... would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So you want to say something to this. Yeah, I think who if you're you worried about spread it, rumors. I, yeah, mm -hmm. I think that you want, you don't want to make any assumptions, you just want to go to them and yeah. say, you know, whatever we had was great, so let's just... Or it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was great. It's over, who cares? So we just, I just want to be careful that there's some confidentiality here. Uh-huh. Okay. That's that part. That's it. <laughs> now, let's, now let's get to the fact. That yeah, he, well, I think he, that this, the person who's asking the question is the one with whom the coworker broke up, right? So yes. the thing that's really tough here is that his heart is a little broken. Even if it was a fast relationship, they got along really well. It's very hard to sit next to someone who you probably still have feelings for, mm -hmm. right? So I would say that's something that you need to process outside of the workplace because mm -hmm. you don't want to be crying at your desk. And not that you're going to cry at your desk, but you don't. It's, it's just Listening it's not to really sad music in your cubicle. Pining. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, James Taylor's Mexico yeah, is a exactly. good one. I played that many times. How does that go? I don't remember. Oh, Mexico. <laughs> I don't remember that soon. to go look it up. <laughs> yeah, so um, you, I would encourage this person to to seek outside counsel uh, for comfort because it's a mm -hmm. very difficult thing to sit next to someone who you still have strong feelings for. I say buck up and get over it. I mean, <laughs> the thing is, this is the risk that you take when you date in the workplace. This is right. a big mother risk you take. Yes. So what we always say is date before you get committed. I, yeah. I mean, date, don't sleep with them. I mean, you have to know somebody you're working with for quite some time before you get involved because the chances of this happening are very high. Right. Mm -hmm. You know how relationships go. You got to go yeah. through a lot of them. So th that, you know, th if you understand that going in, uh -huh. that should make it a little bit easier. <laughs> Not for you, I see. <laughs> but for me, it would make it a lot easier. I, I guess know. I'm feeling some compassion for the for the guy. And yes, he's going to have to buck up. Obviously, he's going to have to go to work. And also, this could be a degree, this could be a certificate 
in not having office romances quickly with someone who's fickle. Mm. I mean, because you do have to find out who the person is, right? If you're going to yeah. do that. So you're saying this is this was your course. You took the class. You just took a course. <laughs> you took a lesson. This is your lesson <laughs> yeah. learned. Romance. What not to do. Office romance 101. What not to do. Exactly. Yeah. I think a lot of people do have to take that class before they yeah. get. This is not a very smart idea. Although I've met couples that met at work and ended up having long-term relationships. Yes. But mm -hmm. you can't just jump into it. This sounds like this happened pretty quickly. Yes, it did. Yeah. yeah. So that's the mistake. Yeah. Right. Well, and some, I, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like the, the guy who wrote this question said, I got romantically involved with one of my coworkers. We had a great connection for a couple of months. Then he suddenly broke up with me. So you, it's a very good point. You have to kind of look at, first of all, what is your um, technique <laughs> for beginning <laughs> romantic relationships? And in the future at work, you should be a slow burn. You mentioned it, yeah. Kathy, you should tr get to know the person very gradually because yeah. it's a high risk venture, which unfortunately now you're sitting with the results of Yeah. That. I mean, at work, you have the, the beautiful thing is that you can become friends and know this person for quite some time, although you never have the full picture. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the way people behave at work is really only half of who they are. You yeah. don't see a lot. Yeah. So you have to understand that going in, but, you know, become friends with them. Maybe hang out on the weekends or in the evening, but don't get romantically involved for quite some time. Yeah. So what is that? Six months, a year? I mean, most people, most things will fizzle out. Yeah. If uh, they're not acted upon. It takes six great, months. that can take great restraint. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I agree with you and I, well, I'm sure you have, right? <laughs> because... <laughs> it, I did have a brief office romance <laughs> once. You did? <laughs> not at this company. <laughs> That. You broke up with me so quickly. <laughs> She's no. still heartbroken. Don't talk about it. <laughs> no, actually, I when I was the receptionist at a, um, a clinic, I mm -hmm. had a romance with the the only other heterosexual in the <laughs> building. We found each she other. She had no choice. That was no, only I, actually, I made the exact yeah. same mistake. The guy mm -hmm. had just broken up with his girlfriend. Oh, oh, rebound. And I was a rebound, but I was too young. I didn't know what a rebound was. I was like 23 years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, probably most 23-year-olds know that, but I did not. So, <laughs> um, yeah. And so it, I went into it, and we had been friends, and we had been working together. I went into it without knowing the danger of that territory, realizing mm -hmm. it. So I guess I'm over-identifying with our the fellow who's asked this question. But I do think it's real. I think that it is a course that we all have to take or yeah. often have to take. And as Kathy's saying, the final outcome is that you learn not to do it unless you progress very slowly. Mm -hmm. Well, I also, I think, you know, a lot of workplaces are fun where, yeah. you know, a lot of groups become friends and you mm -hmm. can hang out together and do things after work or yeah. even at work. And, uh, but ta really take your time to get to know somebody and get to know what they are, what they're like in multiple situations, yeah. not mm -hmm. just in the workplace. Yeah, I agree. I and mean, you'll yeah. probably pick up on things that you don't like about the person and you'll think, Yeah, and it'll fizzle. Dog's yeah. that bullet. Yeah, it'll fizzle. And <laughs> it's, exactly, exactly. I remember someone, <clears throat> I didn't act upon it, and uh, I watched enough situations where I got a little like, oh, you're not that interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, and that starts to happen. Mm -hmm. Right. There are many people who dazzle in the first few weeks, right? They're much yeah. more interesting well, you know, in the first encounters. The feeling yeah. of love and, you know, that whole thing. I mean, we, well, you know what I mean? You know, yeah. the, like the yeah, whole you romanticize. Thing. You over-romanticize. Right. Everything they do is so attractive and mm -hmm. clever <laughs> and cute. And Look cute. at him staple those papers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I never saw anyone hold a staple like that. <laughs> Right. Well, you know that know. that if you're if you're in that phase, yeah. you're not seeing anything. I mean, no. you're not really seeing who the person is. What the, that's what you're going to be left with? Um, <laughs> <laughs> An <laughs> empty stapler <laughs> in a lonely cubicle. You know? <laughs> I'm sitting to James Taylor's Mexico. <laughs> All right, I gotta turn that on. <laughs> oh man, I don't know. This, right. this situation sucks, but honestly, he has to just move on. Yeah, yeah. Pretend on. like you know, move on. Dot org. Do, do your job. You know, pretend like this. Is, clearly, it's not affecting the other guys. <laughs> <laughs> he exactly. needs to play it off like it's not affecting him. Yeah, right. at least well, give the illusion. 
give the illusion that you know well that's i guess why i was that's why i'm encouraging if you needed a little outside support just because it's hard to face you know that as you say the other guy he's having the time of his life he's probably on to the (laughs) next conquest conquest. yeah Yeah. exactly exactly but i think you know Catherine saying go into therapy i say just find (laughs) another one (laughs) <laughs> another relationship outside of the workplace. Outside. outside. The workplace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's another technique. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So either go for counsel if you need it or have a rebound relationship. Exactly. And drop that person as soon as you're done with them. <laughs> oh, my God. I hope we've helped somebody I out hope there. we've helped somebody. Yeah. And what's there. your take on office romances? We'd love to hear from yeah, you. Yeah. Send us a tweet. We want to hear what you're thinking and if you've made any of these mistakes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So that's it for this segment. It is. Join us next time for another My Crazy Office podcast. And please review us on iTunes if you like our show. And don't forget to send your questions to info at mycrazyoffice.co. My Crazy Office is produced in New York City at Key Squared Studios. Stay crazy. Way down here, you need a reason to move. Feel a fool running your stateside.